In this video, I'd like to introduce some other indeterminate forms. So these will be cases where you will have to manipulate the expression at the start so that you can get it into a situation where you have zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. So one such form to look out for is if you encounter something of the form zero times plus or minus infinity. So I'm gonna, for each of these forms, I'm going to provide an example to make sure this situation is clear. So a classic example of this would be if you were asked to find the limit as x approaches infinity of x times e to the minus x. Again, if I think about what happens to that expression, x of course tends toward infinity, but e to the minus x tends toward zero. So this is an example of infinity times zero. Now, when we looked at L'Hopital's rule, it was important that we always had a quotient. But if you get something of the form zero times plus or minus infinity, then you should start to wonder if you can rewrite that in a way that it's suitable then to use L'Hopital's rule. In this case here, if I wanted to now write this as a quotient, I could easily do so by writing it as x divided by e to the x. Now, of course, you could also choose to write it as e to the minus x divided by one over x, but think about kind of what's the simplest way to put this into quotient form. Note that I have not used L'Hopital's rule, so I did not indicate that there. I haven't changed the limit at all. I've just simply rewritten the original expression. Now, x goes to infinity, and so does e to the x. So now we're in the positive infinity over positive infinity case, one of our classic indeterminate forms, and we would be able then to apply L'Hopital's rule to this directly. So we take the derivative of x, which gives us one, and the derivative of e to the x, which gives us e to the x. And here, this is not indeterminate. While the denominator still heads toward infinity, the numerator is constant, it's one. And so this is going to give us zero. So when we encounter something of the form zero times plus or minus infinity, it's important that we start off by rewriting the expression in the hopes of getting one of our classic indeterminate forms. Another indeterminate form to look out for would be something of the form infinity minus infinity. Again, if you have five minus five, you have 100 minus 100, we know that that's zero. But now when I replace that with infinite values, we no longer have a way of quantifying those in an obvious manner. So an example of this, which will again demonstrate how we can manipulate such an expression from the start, is if we needed to find the limit as x approaches one of x over x minus one, subtracting one over ln of x. So this is gonna be where we start. To begin with, think about what happens when you plug in x equals one. The first part I get one over one minus one, and the second part I get one over natural log of one. So both pieces in that difference are of the form one divided by something approaching zero. And so that would give us this infinity minus infinity. So what we wanna do here is try to combine those in a useful way. And in particular, we can do that by getting a common denominator. So the common denominator here would be the product of these two denominators and what that would then yield in the numerator would be x times natural log of x minus x minus one. And we wanna be careful about distributing that minus sign. So now let's think about what happens. When I plug in x equals one, I get one times zero minus zero in the numerator. And in the denominator, I get zero times zero. So this is certainly the indeterminate form zero over zero, which means I can apply L'Hopital's rule to it. Now here, it's a little bit more involved than our previous examples. I have to be a little careful in actually taking the derivatives. So remember that in the numerator here, I have a product, first of all, x times natural log of x. So I have to use the product rule on that part. The derivative of x times the function log x plus x times the derivative of log x. 
and I'm subtracting from that the derivative of x minus 1, which is just 1. In the denominator, we also have a product. So we take the derivative of x minus 1, which is 1, times natural log of x plus the function x minus 1 times 1 over x. So we can clean this up a little bit. In particular, notice that I can cancel some things out. So this x times 1 over x is 1, and I'm subtracting 1. So that leaves simply ln of x in the numerator. And in the denominator, I get natural log x. And if I were to distribute this part here, I'm going to get x times 1 over x, which would be 1, minus 1 over x. So that's just a little bit cleaner. Again, if I plug in 1, the numerator is natural log of 1, which is 0. The denominator is likewise 0 plus 1 minus 1. So we get 0 over 0. We saw in our earlier examples that we can apply L'Hopital's rule as many times as necessary until we no longer get an indeterminate form. The derivative of the numerator is 1 over x. The derivative of the denominator is 1 over x plus 0 plus 1 over x squared. So that 1 over x, think about that as x to the minus 1. Now we no longer have an indeterminate form. I've reached the point where I can simply drop in the value of x equals 1. And that's going to give us 1 over 1 plus 1. So our final answer is 1 half. And the last type of indeterminate form I want you to be on the lookout for is involving exponents. So if you end up with something of the form 1 to the infinity or 0 to the infinity or infinity to the 0. A classic example of this would be if we were asked to find the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 2 over x raised to the x power. A very common mistake that I've seen made when encountering a limit like this is to simply think that the answer is 1. And where that's coming from is the recognition that the base there is approaching 1 and the numerator is approaching infinity and simply justifying it as, oh, 1 to any power is 1. So this would be a very different question if this was just 1 to the x. Instead, the base is not constant. The base is slowly approaching 1 at the same time as the exponent is growing infinitely large. So that's where the, the confusion comes in here. And what makes this indeterminate is, again, it's not immediately obvious how to quantify this. Also, we'll see that we get an answer that's very different from 1. So you want to be careful with these types of problems. The biggest thing to keep in mind here is there's an, a kind of a standard way that we can approach manipulating these so that I can use L'Hopital's rule. And that's going to involve, right away, rewriting the expression. And notice that, again, I haven't changed the limit. If I were to rewrite this as e to the natural log of the original expression. So what I'm taking advantage of here make this a little bit clearer, is the fact that e to the x and natural log of x are inverses of one another. And so I have not changed the expression. And again, of course, it looks like I've made it more complicated, but we're going to see that this is a very important step in getting us to the point where we can use L'Hopital's rule. So now that I have this complicated expression, notice that what I really want to know is what does this portion approach, right? So if I know that that approaches the number 100, then my limit would be e raised to the 100 power. I'd be done there. So what I want to do is off to the side, focus on the um, exponent. So this next line here, I'm not claiming is equivalent to the limit above. I'm kind of just pausing and Oops, I'm having a little trouble writing this here. I'm pausing to um, write here. Yeah, okay. Let's 
So looking at the limit as x approaches infinity of just the numerator, I'm going to start to rewrite this. So we've got this. Remember your log properties, first of all, that that exponent within the log function can be brought out front as a multiplier. So this should be equivalent to this. Now let's kind of stop and, and reevaluate. This limit here, if I start to think about what happens to this as x goes to infinity, this is going to yield a situation in which I have infinity times zero. That's exactly the type of indeterminate form that we wanted to look at in number one there. We've already established that the approach we want to take in that case is to try to rewrite that product as a quotient. Again, you have two ways that you could do that in terms of trying to move part of it down to the denominator. And the much easier thing to deal with is to take the simpler function x and rewrite that in the denominator. So I'm going to say that this is now equivalent to the natural log function divided by 1 over x instead of just multiplied by x. So my only work here is simply just rewriting the, the expression. So I haven't used L'Hopital's rule yet. But now think about what happens. The top goes to natural log of 1, which is 0. And 1 over x is also approaching 0. So at this stage, I can now apply L'Hopital's rule. And the derivative of the top, I have to use the chain rule. We get 1 over 1 plus 2 over x. And multiply that by the derivative of 1 plus 2 over x. That's going to give me minus 2 over x squared. The derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. Now we can clean that up a little bit because we will have some cancellation. Um, in particular, we're going to be able to cancel this with everything except that 2 up there. So this is going to leave me with the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 divided by 1 plus 2 over x. That is not indeterminate. I can think about the fact that the 2 over x part will go to 0, and this will leave me with 2. So remember, that's not our final answer. If you come back, what we just did is we found what the boxed red expression here is approaching as x goes to infinity. So as a consequence, when I go back here to solve my limit, I'm going to be able to say that this now approaches e, and I want to replace the box part with our limit, and we found that that approaches 2. So our final answer would be e squared. And again, this is just a general demonstration of how to deal with this type of indeterminate form. These, are, of course, are difficult, and you really want to pay special attention to starting by rewriting the expression as e to the natural log of itself. And that's what allows us to bring in L'Hopital's rule here.